Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. There's just an update on my experiments with the Kumo Automated Landing System with KOS. I did more during the live stream yesterday, and uh, basically what we did was go into an inclined orbit. You can see here a 45 degree orbit, but also pick a target that was not directly under our orbit. In the previous tests, we were at the equator, and more or less the target we picked was uh, just at the equator. And so now we are just a little bit off there for the first test and in the low orbit, so there's a 63 kilometer orbit. And once again, the Kumo is automated from the circular situation. I am a little bit nervous about what happens when it's not in a circular situation, right? It's easy to cheat the thing into a circular situation and go with it, but the lopsided orbits are actually trickier than the circular orbits, which is why everybody tries to get into a circular orbit for the landings. Uh, but anyway, here we are beginning the descent burn, the main descent burn. And you can see it's tilted a little bit to the south so that it can get to the target, but along the way it should get back to just retrograde. It does tilt up a little bit to give itself some time. That does entail a little bit more inefficiency, but I'd rather make sure that we're over the target and able to dump the drop tanks then try to be overly efficient. And in fact, uh, in all the tests, the landing takes less than 2,000 meters per second. The delta V consumption for the tests in this video were basically the same as in the previous video. So for the low orbit, the 63 kilometer orbit, it's about 1,870 meters per second. And for the high orbit, the 163 kilometer orbit, it's about 100 meters per second more than that. So here we are, and you can see it's very well lined up now. And it's doing that pulsing thing. That's because the conditions in this segment, this uh, mode of the script, uh, has it going from lock thrall to one to lock thrall to point one instead of having a continuous thing. In previous uh, segments, in previous modes, it was continuous, but uh, that's why it does the pulsing thing. Possibly if I just copied the uh, thing from the previous modes, it would be more continuous and find a happy medium. But We'll see whether that's good or not. Realistically, a lot of engines actually just have modes and not have continuous throttling. They just go from one throttle to another throttle directly. Uh, there are many reasons for that, like combustion instability, and, well, we have a little bit of uh, instability in our lander there. Uh, but next test, I decided to go into an inclined orbit again, 45 degree orbit, and also move the target position further off plane. So we are going to pick a more extreme position. And considering how slow locations deviate from orbits when it comes to the moon because it has the 28-ish day orbit, uh, we don't expect our landing targets to be that far off. It should be possible to line up with the landing targets pretty well without relying on the landing script to correct that much. So this is probably already a, an extreme situation. And we are in the higher orbit, so 163 kilometers, and just seeing whether the results are consistent. That's one thing that we want, is that uh, despite differences in the situation, that we get consistent results. After that, we can tweak things. So the previous time it landed uh, within two kilometers of our target, but still not as accurate as I'd like, but considering how much it, how much it varies from time to time, it's tough to optimize more than that. Um, it's possible to optimize more than that, with more fine-tuned burns closer to the end. But right now we're doing a very coarse burn right at the end. I mean, if we spent like a minute hovering like Neil Armstrong did over the moon on Apollo 11, then yes, we would be able to get to the target a little bit more accurately, right? So that is possible, but maybe not entirely necessary. We have to think about what's really necessary for our missions, and I think we can get a rover around, you know, two kilometers-ish, and it'll be fine. And an important thing is simple logistics. There's a mod that allows us to transfer resources between vehicles uh, without actually having to plug them into each other, and as long as simple logistics works, we're good. And so simple logistics works based on the 2.25 kilometer range. So here we have the drop tank uh, disposal, and that occurs based on velocity or based on the vehicle mass. So if the vehicle mass goes below a certain amount, then it assumes that there's no more fuel left in the drop tank and disposes of the drop tank. Or if we're so slow that we're in the final part of descent, 
we want to get rid of the drop tank and have it not be directly under us. We have to be sort of careful in the future when we're building bases not to have it bomb our actual base locations, so um, I'll have to think about whether our current disposal timing is ideal. And as we come into a landing, we see that we're a little bit far this time. We're actually 2.8 kilometers away, so that's a little bit suspicious. And we're, we've gone a little bit long. Now, in the previous video on the high pass, we actually fell short. So that gives you an idea about the deviations between one attempt and another. But anyway, uh, these were the results during the live stream with the Kumo Lander. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.